Welcome to the Fallish Day. I am Jesse Lee Peterson. Thank you all so much for being with me. Remember, you can support the Fallish Day by going to thefallishday.tv slash donate to support our work. Also on locals.com. So click the description there, the link. I have with me today Bryce Mitchell, and he is an MMA fighter who is currently fighting for the UFC. He's fighting for the UFC. Bryce, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you so much for having me, brother. It's an honor to be here. It's an honor to have you. How old are you, Bryce? I'm 30 years old. Really? And yes, I've, sir. I've been watching some of your uh, video things. How did you get into fighting, MMA fighting? How did that happen? Well, when I was a kid, we used to do just kind of neighborhood boxing matches and neighborhood wrestling matches, and we always did that. It was really competitive, but I didn't really have any skill because I didn't have a coach. When I was 16 years old, I couldn't play any other sports because I didn't like to practice other sports. I liked to play basketball. I liked to play baseball. I liked to play football and soccer, but I didn't like to practice those sports because they weren't my passion. And so when I get into high school, I couldn't compete with the other kids. I have no athletic gifts or abilities. <laughs> and so I started training MMA under a legitimate coach when I was 16 years old. And I learned skill, technique, and uh, I actually focused and uh, honed in my, my craft and became a master of what I do. Really? And how did you overcome the fear of being hurt? You know, knocked out, teeth knocked out. Oh, whatever. How did you overcome that fear? Or, or, or someone, you know, hurting you like that? How did you overcome that? Well, recently that fear has all been gone in the name of the Lord. And, you know, I, for a long time I fought without Christ in my heart. And so I've always had those fears. But here recently, um, you know, God commands us, do not be afraid. And yeah. so I, I want to walk with God and live by that word of God. It's not a coincidence that the Bible says 365 times, do not be afraid. And that's one time every day. If you think about it, there's 365 days in a year. Point. So every day yeah. God tells us, do not fear, do not fear the enemies. I will free you from the hand of the enemies. And Basically, it's against the Bible. It's against God if you go in there with fear in your heart. And so, yes, I'll get nervous. I, my heart rate's going to go up. I'm going to sweat. I'm going to be worried about things, but I'm not going to fear. And I'm not going to let another man instill fear in me. It's just against how I live. And uh, more than anything, Christ has made me that way. And now that you overcome the fear of fighting, what's the difference in your fighting technique? As when you have fear, I'm sure you went up in a different state of mind and all that. Now that you don't have fear, how is it different in the fighting for you? Well, it really just frees your mind a lot. And you, you can go out there a lot more relaxed and loose and let your techniques flow because fear really cripples people. It really freezes you up. You know, when you get fear, like, you know, them sheep that faint when they get afraid, they, they get stiff and fall over. Yeah, that's what fear. Fear freezes you up. It, it makes those muscles just paralyzed. And so. When you have no fear, you're truly loose. You're kind of flowing like water in there. And um, that's that's what I try to do. That's an amazing point. Do you, uh, so how did, I know you're married. How does your wife feel about you fighting and getting all knocked down or whatever happened? How does she feel about all that? Well, she hates it, but she also loves this nice house that I built and all the money <laughs> that paid off our farm and uh, you know, she takes good care of me. I know if I went in there and got all my teeth knocked out, she'd make me mash taters every single day for the rest <laughs> of my life, you know, so <laughs> I'm, I'm taken care of. Nice. And so, um, you, I, I read that you grew up on a farm down in Arkansas, I believe. So what's interesting is I actually didn't grow up on a farm. I had to work I mean, as hard as you can possibly imagine to get this farm. I grew up in the city. Now, my Fast, you know, backtrack a couple generations and my whole family was farmers. But my mom, she was not. My Mimi grew up on a farm, but my mom did not. She grew up in a trailer park. Uh, and then I grew up in the city, uh, of course, coming from my mom. But something called me. It was basically God led me back to the countryside. I live in a pasture now. I bought a farm. And I mean, I'm, that's what I am. I've, I raise cattle now, and uh, I'm a cowboy, and, and that's just in my blood. Even though it skipped my generation of my mom, 
Yeah. I'm telling you, I got that farmer in my blood. There's nothing else I'd rather do than UFC fight and, and farm cattle. Right on, man. I grew up on a farm plantation down in Alabama. I uh, mm -hmm. plant cotton and peanuts and corn and built the cows, fed the horses, rode the horses, all kind of stuff. So I know what the farm life is like, so it is nice. It's very nice. Um, and so were you always a Christian? No, sir. I, I called on Christ because I had a demonic experience. I was dating a witch and I seen her get fully possessed and uh, she was doing supernatural things. She was definitely possessed by demons. Right. And I said, and I said, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command any evil to leave. And she left my household right then. And I knew that whatever was in her was pure evil because I commanded evil to leave and she left. And then I, and I did it in the name of Jesus Christ. I said, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command evil to leave. And she left. And then I knew right then the name of Jesus Christ has powers. Really? And so did she say she was a witch or you just recognize her as a witch? Well, I found out that she was a witch after she had left. I put it together, <laughs> but she had witchcraft books. And, you know, I didn't I thought witchcraft was fairy tales. I thought that Jesus yeah. was was a make believe story. And so I would let her in my house read these witchcraft books and I wouldn't think anything of it. Well, then one day she became fully possessed, threatening to kill me, threatening to call the law on me. And, you know, she said, I'm going to say that you beat me. And she would punched out my windows. She had blood all over. And wow. uh, she was saying that she's going to call the law on me and say that I beat her. And she said, I'm going to take everything from you. I'm going to take this farm from you. I'm going to take all your sponsorships. The UFC is going to fire you because you're going to they're going to think that you beat me. And I'm going to call the law right now and tell them that you beat me. And she's saying all this with blood all over. And then um, she broke out into speaking tongues. I mean, she wasn't <laughs> speaking English. She was actually gibber. And I know tongues in the book of Acts is a holy thing. When you know, when when the spirit of the Holy Spirit descends upon those apostles in Acts, they all speak in tongues. And I know that tongues can be a very holy thing. But you got to remember, the devil is a copier. Right. And so the devil can also make his followers speak in tongues. So anyway, she broke out into demonic tongues, and that's when I knew this is not something natural this is something of the spirit and so i called on the only person that i knew to call on because i've heard about the power of jesus but i'd never called on him so i called on jesus and bam she's gone and so once you call on jesus she just got up and ran out of the house left the house have you seen her since then i've seen her one time since then jogging down the road because we stay in the same town but right. um she she did say to me before she left she said you'll have three children they'll all die and you'll lose every fight for the rest of your life so she cursed me before she left but then i replied to that i said in the name of jesus christ you'll do nothing and at that moment when i seen that jesus christ actually was making her leave i was instantaneously a christian from that point <laughs> and then from from that point, I started studying the Word of God, and I actually cared about the Word of God. I never cared about the Bible until that point, and now God's put it on my heart. And I, I not only walk with God, but I dig into the Word of God, and I'm just a, I'm a reborn Christian is what they call it. I mean, totally new person, and without that experience, I wouldn't be who I am today. Why did you—so you were not a—why were you not a Christian prior to this incident? Because I believed what our public education, which is purely satanic, taught us. I believe we come from monkeys. I believe that the Big Bang was the truth. I believe all the stuff that NASA ever said, because the public education system is designed to make your kids satanic. And I, it worked perfectly on me. I was so convinced that we came from monkeys. I did all my research. I realized that we have a different number of chromosomes than monkeys it's 23 and 24. There's no yeah. way we came from, from monkeys. There's yeah. no way. There's no way that the Big Bang is the truth. There's no way. That all these are lies to get kids away from the Word of God. And if you actually study these lies with an open heart, you can find the the deceitfulness. There's no evolution. There's no climate change. There's no... All these lies are, are, are told to children because they want to control you. Yeah. That's amazing, man. And so do you... It, it crossed my mind. Do you believe the earth is flat or round? I know that the earth is flat because it's in the word of God. It describes it as flat. 
Psalms 104, the earth shall not be moved. The Bible doesn't say that the earth spins and rotates and does all of this stuff. The Bible says on the first page of Genesis that there is a firmament. Most Christians don't care what a firmament is. And a lot of them that do care don't know what the firmament is. I know what the firmament is because I prayed for discernment. So I know what the firmament is. I know that Isaiah 40, 22, God sitteth above the circle of the earth. God does not sit at the, above the globe of the earth. The people who wrote that book, they knew what the difference in a globe, a three-dimensional object was, and a circle, a two-dimensional object was. It's always described. Heaven is above, earth is in the middle, hell is below. If you go and watch near-death experiences, people who died, actually their heart stopped, and then they came back to life, they almost always either go down or they go up, and they have the sensation of floating up are floating down. That's because hell is literally beneath our feet and heaven is literally above our head. If you look up in the sky and you see the stars, you are looking at heaven. That is the heavenly bodies above. And by the way, the stars are not what the sun is. The sun is not a star and the stars are not a sun. On the first page of the Bible, it said God created the sun, the stars, and the moon. He differentiates all three because they are three different heavenly bodies of light. So the reason that it's important to notice is because it, in Psalms, basically Psalms 91, the firmament alone showeth God's handiwork. If you know that there's a firmament, if you know what these heavenly lights are, you'll have to understand that only a God could create this. And uh, there's no such thing as Big Bang. That's amazing. And so before you became a Christian, did you think, believe the earth was round or flat? It was, it was about a year before I became a Christian that I realized that the earth was flat. Then once I became a Christian, I digged into that word of God and I lived with the word of God in my heart. Let your light so shine before men and they may see your good works and glorify your father, which is in heaven. I mean, these scriptures are burned into my heart. I have to live by them now. And so when I started doing my research into the Bible, I realized it is the original flat earth document. It five times, actually six times, it says the earth shall not be moved. So as a Christian, you can pick the Bible or you can pick NASA, but you cannot serve two masters. You cannot believe NASA and you cannot believe the Bible. You pick one of them. <laughs> and in the name of Jesus Christ, I pick the Bible. The earth shall not be moved. It was set on its foundations and it is fixed in its place. It does not spin. It does not rotate. Every now and then it quakes a little bit, but that's <laughs> it. And so do you believe that we went to the moon or not? I, I know that we didn't went go to the moon. And there's a difference between believing and knowing. I have discernment through the Holy Spirit. I know for a fact we did not go to the moon. Neil Armstrong is a liar. He's <laughs> lying through the grit of his teeth. And I know it. I don't think it. I what? know it. Uh, really? And how do you know, know for sure lying. we didn't go to the moon? You just know it for sure. How do you know that? Because everything that NASA does is a lie. N-A-S-A, -A, add a T, you get the word Satan. It's the same letters. I'm just telling you, NASA is purely satanic. It was invented to deceive. I can tell you what the end goal of NASA is, Mr. Peterson. The end goal of NASA is to fake an alien invasion. They're going to they're gonna attack probably United States or other parts of the world and say that aliens did it. That's the end goal of NASA. It's all culminating up to this point. In fact, they might do it after the rapture to explain the actual rapture. When the rapture happens, people are going to say that aliens did it. That's right. Wow. And that's, I've never heard that before. That's interesting. That's a fact, because remember, Satan knows the word of God. You got to understand that Satan can read revelations just like we can. Right. So say, Satan knows there's a rapture. He's done, God's told everybody the rapture's coming. Satan is a counterpuncher. He's waiting for God to swing, and he's going to try to counterpunch. His counter to the rapture is saying that aliens did it, because he cannot have people believing that God has raptured the church, because then people will believe the Bible. So to counter the rapture, Satan will say that aliens have abducted the humans. Uh, and let me ask, I have so much I want to talk to you about. Um now that you believe in God, and you're a Christian and believe in God, do you have perfect peace? 
Well, I wouldn't say perfect because I'm not perfect. I still sin every single day, and that leads me away from that peace. But when I'm in my meditation and I'm in my prayer, I know that God is with me. He protects me from all the fiery darts of the of the devil. And I try to walk every single day with that full armor of God, the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the belt of truth, the sandals of peace, the, the sword, which is the word of God. And most importantly, of all, the shield of faith, the shield of faith blocks all fiery darts of the devil. So why don't Christ came that we might have perfect peace? Why don't you have it? Because I'm not perfect, but... I, I I do pray for peace. I prayed for peace right before we came on here, but I let, you know, I, I have greed, I have lust, I have sins and stuff, and every day is a battle for me to put these sins down and, and walk with God. And I will say this, my peace is, is way more than it's ever been. And the more peaceful I get, the more I get to where the things in this life just don't matter as much to me anymore. And uh, I just kind of look forward to going to heaven more and more. But I'm also satisfied with this life, and I love this life. I love my wife, my kid, the farm. I love everything. And so I do want to walk with peace while I'm on this earth. And do you have anger? Absolutely, but I have to put it aside. Just like Proverbs said, you know, the wrath will destroy you. Why don't you just overcome the anger completely and be done with it? Why not let it go? Man, I I really wish I could, and, and I've can. done a lot better. I've done a lot better um, since I've come to God. I certainly have. I used to break a lot of stuff uh, in my trailer. I mean, just <laughs> punch doors, take out doors, uh, all sorts of stuff I used to break. But I've done a lot better since I've come to Christ at controlling my anger. So why not let it, now that you believe in God, and, and it's clear that anger is evil, and anyone that has anger is a murderer and cannot be trusted, so God says you can overcome anger completely. Why not just drop it right now? I want to. I want to be done with it. If and, you knew uh, how, would you do it? If you knew yes, for sure how to drop anger and be done with it, would you do it? Yes. You got, Forgive your mother for turning you away from your father. Forgive your mother and forgive your father for not protecting you from your mother. And God will forgive you and give you perfect peace, and you will have no anger, never again. Will you forgive your mother? Yes. Did you know you needed to forgive her? Yes. How did you know that? <laughs> because you don't have perfect peace. When you forgive your mother and your father, God will forgive you, and he will take away the spirit of your mother. Because right now you have the spirit, the mindset, and emotion of your mother, you become like what you hate. So you have your mother's nature. And that's why God said we must be born again of the spirit of the father, right? And so when you go right. to your mother and say, hey mother, I've been angry at you, I've been judging you, I'm wrong. I realize you couldn't help yourself because your mother became like her mother and what she done to you, she couldn't help it. And then your father couldn't protect you from your mother because he didn't know how to deal with her. But when you forgive them, by apologizing for resenting them, don't ask for forgiveness. You forgive them and God will forgive you. And I promise you, he will give you perfect peace. Well, I love that you said that because the timing of that is perfect. And uh, I'll just open up a little bit of what's going on in my household. My, my sister is possessed by demons and she, she attacked me the other day with words. I went over to my mom's house and my sister came out and, uh, you know, unprovoked, she came up to me and sh she's just possessed. She And she knows I'm filled with the Holy Spirit. And she said, I hate you. Uh, I wish you was dead. I hope you go to hell. And she's <laughs> never said anything like that to yeah. me. And this was just this was just a week ago, brother. And, uh, you know, I'm still mad at my mom because she let my sister say that stuff. And my sister lives with my mom. And so uh, it's really it's really strange that you bring that up right now at a time that uh, I'm really mad at my mom for letting my sister talk to me like that and you're right i do need to forgive her and and i've i've forgiven her uh especially my sister i feel bad for her, but you know i need to forgive my mom too for even letting my sister talk like that well uh and the way you forgive is, is, is salvation's of the heart right when you have right. anger you have judgment 
And when you have judgment, you're playing God because you judge yourself, you judge everybody, you're playing God, right? And the way you forgive is admit that you are wrong for being mm -hmm. angry, for being hateful, right? And God will forgive you. So realize your mother could not help herself because your mother yeah. hates you because you look like your father. And she hates your mm -hmm. father, so she hates any image of your father. That's why she treats you the way she treats you. And so, for, hey, mother, I'm sorry for hating you. I'm sorry for being angry. And God will forgive you. Let me know how that goes. I will, brother. I'll stay in touch with you. And you'll be able to deal with your wife, too, because the woman you married to is just like your mother. You married the woman that you hate. You're attracted to what you hate, right? And so the reason that's so hard to deal with your wife because you are married to the same spirit. The same spirit is in your wife, is in your mother, in your mother, is in your wife. And mm -hmm. that's not going to change until you forgive your mother and your whole, that spirit will be taken away from you. You'll be fine. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, I'll be praying over all of this stuff that you just said. And like I said, the timing of this, it, it just couldn't be any better. And have you forgiven your father? Of course, I've forgiven him. Even Did you though, tell you him? Know, he, he's left me. He's, he's never done anything in my life. He's never even seen me, never talked to me, but I've forgiven him. And have you told him that? I've never seen him, brother. I don't know. Oh, you've never seen your father? I could never see him if I wanted to. He's He's gone. <laughs> oh, he died? Well, I think he's alive, but he's just gone. What do you mean he's gone? Your, fa your mother don't know who he is? Well, she knows who he is, but he's just left me. He's never talked to me. He's never nothing. I mean, I, I don't know where to go to find him. Oh. I, I've never looked. And so your mother don't know his people? No, ma'am. or No, sir. Uh, his uh, his parents actually killed themselves. Oh. What so, a mess. Yeah, my... Well, yeah, just crazy. know that your father loved you, and when he left, he left your mother. He didn't leave you. Because my mom is crazy. And yeah. That's why I left. Yeah. <laughs> so that's just, why I left. It what? took me a long. T it took me a long time to realize that he left because my mom is crazy. And yes. He could. He couldn't bear to be with her. When father leave their wives or, or the children, or the they leave the mother. They don't leave the children. But the mother made the children think the father left them. She doesn't right. tell you the truth about the situation. Right. Well, that's amazing, man. I got to ask you this, that fight the other night with um, uh, Mike Tyson, mm. what did you think about that fight? I didn't think it was a very good fight. I think that neither of them were trying too hard to hurt each other and that when there's that much money in a sport, it's very hard to keep it actually fair. And I think that both sides actually pulled punches. I saw punches that Mike could have landed and I saw punches that Jake could have landed and if I had to pick who would actually win in a fair fight, I think Mike could have beat him, and Mike was pulling punches. Oh, okay. And who has been your toughest fighter? The hardest fight you ever had is with who? Whom? The, tough, the toughest fight I had was with Ilya Taporia, and uh, I'll get my rematch, and I'll be avenged. I was sick that fight, and I shouldn't have took that fight, but like I said, I'll be avenged when I get my rematch. Amazing. Nice. That's cool. Um, so when the, I got to ask this, I, I wanted to ask earlier, when the hell come out of your wife, how do you deal with it? Well, the first thing I need to do is just try to get some space away from her because the <laughs> first thing that wants to come out of my mouth is not holiness, you know, <laughs> I, I, and, and if usually whenever I just don't see her for five or 10 minutes or something like that, we can have a much better conversation. But the first thing that comes out of me is anger. Yeah. And so I, you know, a good, a good five, 10 minute break and then a good thinking about it, um, definitely helps me because, you know, we'll, we'll exchange some words and then it's not going to get pretty if we keep exchanging them. And then if you just take a little break, usually that helps a lot. Uh, man, that's good, man. Well, I want you to know, and if you forgive, and forgiveness again is admitting that you're wrong for being angry. They couldn't help themselves, right? You will right. be free, and you're going to deal with your wife and everything and everyone in a perfect way. It will change. All right? Yes, sir. Isn't that amazing? It is. <laughs> amazing. So I got to ask politics. 
did you vote for the great white hope? Um, I I didn't, brother, and I did. I definitely wanted Trump to win. I support Trump all the way. And here's the reason I don't vote is, well, number one, foremost, I know that our elections are just totally rigged. I mean, it's always been rigged. It probably always will be. Um, and also Arkansas, it only has three electoral college points and Arkansas won Trump overwhelmingly. So yeah. if I would have gone and voted, Arkansas already gets its three points. So if I go and waste my time and my gas money and take away from my training and all my, my work, my farm and whatnot, it's not going to make a difference. But, um, that's why I didn't vote, but I love when other people go out and vote and I, you know, I'm glad that other people vote and, I wish I had the faith in the voting system, but I don't. I just think it's totally rigged. Uh, but I think God put Donald Trump in the office, yeah. not me voting for him. And how did you know who the great white hope was? Because um, I know what the opposite is. And uh, <laughs> it's it's the path of black destruction or whatever, the Indian destruction, whatever she is. And dude, th that... Kamala Harris is so satanic, dude. Anybody yeah. can see that. Yeah. And and I don't think Trump is perfect. Uh, he's definitely not perfect. There's already things he's done that I don't like, but he's better than the other option. Amazing. And how do you feel about the illegal aliens coming in? Do you think we need to close the border and everything? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, they're raping our kids. They're bringing in fentanyl. I think fentanyl ought to be completely, totally illegal. I mean, dude, I can't stand what they're doing to this country, and it's yeah. not by accident. They're doing it deliberately. They're trying to destroy us. They've been bought off by Chinese and Russian politicians. <clears throat> they're trying to – this is a, a pre-war phase. Before they come over here with boots on the ground to kill us all, they're going to soften us up economically. They're going to flood us with immigrants. They're going to flood with fentanyl. They're going to uh, rig our elections. These are all pre-war acts yeah. that lead up to them putting boots on the ground the chinese outnumber us so much brother it ain't even funny and i tell people this all the time but dude we're outnumbered a hundred to one by these people that hate us and uh, these are all pre-acts of war to soften us up will you ever run for office i will oh good we need you in office we need good men in office I'd give my life serving this country in office. Right on. Because you know that they, they try to kill me. You know that. What do you mean? I mean, look at JFK. You know, look at Martin Luther King. All the great people that fought for true freedom, uh, they'll just, they'll kill you. Oh, you said they will try to kill you. They have not, you didn't say they have tried to kill you, right? No, because I'm nothing right now. But if I went to office, I would actually lay down, I would be more than happy to lay down my life fighting for this country's freedom because all the people that stormed those beaches in Normandy, all those people that, that fought for our freedom over all these years, I would happily die just like they did for the opportunity for this country to reign because even though there's a lot of things about this country I hate, God's chosen to be prosperous because we've got more Christians than anywhere else. And that right there speaks volumes to the power of Christianity. You don't see Muslim countries running the world. Right. You don't see these atheist countries running the world. God bless this nation because there's more Christians per capita than anywhere else in the world. And that's why this country has been protected, not because of anything else, but because believers of God are ready to die for this country. Amazing. Absolutely. And uh, what do you think about women? Let me ask this first. Do you believe in the order of God? Yes. And you know what that order is? God, man, wife, children. Yeah, God in Christ, Christ in man, man and woman, woman and children. So do you believe that women was created to lead or to follow? To follow. And, and, and is it because of that order? Because of that order. Because God said so. There's no other reason it needed. It's because God designed us that way. And so why are the men allowing this to happen putting women in all these leadership roles and all that kind of stuff, knowing that it's not going to work because it's not the order of God. You see it in the churches, politics, schools, and even homes and places like that. It's just destroying. <laughs> Why are men afraid to say no to the women when it comes to that? Because we've turned our back on God in a lot of ways. And that's just one of the ways that Satan is destroying this country. And, uh, 
there's a lot of things that a woman a, a woman can do that a man cannot. But as far as as preaching and and leading, that's for the role of men to do. Yeah, isn't that amazing? And so things things are not going to get better until until God's order come to order, right? That order is in place. And I don't see it except for a few men who are working on themselves to overcome the fallen state. I don't see that happening anytime soon. I don't either, brother. And uh, what's what's great about it, though, is that there is hope because God, just like that, can turn a sick nation into a healed nation, you know. So it won't take long once everybody worships God. But until we have that, you're going to see this gradual decline. But at any second, God could take over and heal if we just put him in our hearts. Yeah. There, want, there's always hope. Yeah, I understand. I want to ask this about when your sister, you mentioned that your sister attached you the other day at some point at your mother's house. How did you handle that? And what did you think about it at the time? Well, the first thing I did was um, I insulted her back. You know, I, I made fun. Of, I made fun of her for, for, you know, for things I shouldn't have even said. And then, and then, and I didn't curse at her. I didn't say anything awful, but I, the first thing I said was, well, Hey, you're 34 years old. You need to move out of your mom's house. Yeah. And, um, that's the first thing that came to mind. And so I, I said that and I probably shouldn't have. No, that was true. At that age, she should be out on her own. She should. She should have. She should have a husband. She yeah. should have, be bearing children. These are the most fruitful years of her life. She, but she's wasting away her life and doing nothing. And it leads to depression. It leads to spitefulness. It leads to bitterness. And all of this stuff is in her heart because she truly knows what she's doing with her life, but she doesn't want to change it. She's crippled by alcohol. She's crippled by drugs. And um, but. Then I realized that this is not an earthly attack because my sisters never said anything like this to me. I realized this is demonic. So I started speaking the name of Jesus over. And uh, that's how I ended the conversation. I said, in the name of Jesus Christ, nothing evil will harm me. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command any evil to leave my presence. And um, that's how I ended it. But I probably shouldn't have told her <laughs> some of the stuff that I said at first, well, even if it is true. Your sister has the same problem that you have. She hates your mother, and because she hates her, she can't get away from her. And she's yearning for her father as well. Do you guys have the same father? Yes, sir. She's yearning. That emptiness that she feels, that boy, is a yearning for the father, and she hates her mother. That's why she can't get away from her. So yeah, she, you know, if, yeah. if she yeah. wants to be free, she got to forgive your mother as well. I know. I know, brother. There's so much hate and malice in her heart, it makes me sick. Yeah. But, uh, I, I, you know, hell is real, brother. And right after that experience, I had a dream that I went to hell. And, um, brother, I don't want that for nobody. It's so awful down there. And, uh, these, <laughs> you know, when I have a fight coming up, I always get these demonic attacks, especially if I'm going to win the fight. And this is right now, this is God telling me I'm going to win this fight on December 7th. You go ahead and bet the farm on it because God's okay. guaranteed my victory. God's guaranteed my victory. And I know this because of all the demonic attacks going on in my life. When I get this many demonic attacks, it's in my dreams. It's in my personal life. Um, it's going on with people around me. When I get that many demonic attacks, I know that something great spiritually is about to happen and something good is about to happen. That's why evil is trying to tear me down right now. And I had this dream of going to hell. And I just want to say hell is so real, brother. And I do not want anybody to go there. I don't want my sister to go to hell. I don't want I don't want my neighbor to go to hell. It's so wicked. It's so awful. These demons are so perverted and they they're so filled with hate. They are pure hatred. And to be stuck with that for an eternity in the absence of God, there are not words to describe how disgusting that is. And when I wake up from a dream like that, brother it's just I have this feeling about me as it's happened a couple of times and I hate it. Describe what what hell. Give me an example of what hell looked like and what the attack looked like <clears throat> that's happening to you. It's just demons tormenting me. It's just these people 
they're, it's people with, sh- with their faces are shifted and they're, they look like people, but their faces are so damn ugly. And uh-huh. they're just, the, the feeling that I get in that dream is a feeling that I just really can't put words to, but I know the feeling because I've had a couple dreams now where I'm surrounded by demons. But um, the number one feeling I would say is helplessness. And here's something interesting about the both times. I've had two dreams where I go to hell. In both dreams, I I realize, hey, I'm in hell and these are demons. This is this is what this is. And I try to say the name Jesus Christ in the dream, and my mouth cannot produce the word Jesus. I can say any other word I want. I can talk to these demons and say anything I want to them. But when I try to say the word Jesus, it's it's like my mouth is is wired shut. And I can't say Jesus. And in both times from these dreams, I've had that dream where I'm in hell. It's a nightmare is what it is. But both times I've actually woke up yelling out the name Jesus. And not just, I mean, literally I wake up and just wake up saying Jesus. And as soon as I say the name Jesus, I wake up out of these dreams. That's amazing. And well- in hell, in hell, you can't even say Jesus. You cannot even produce his 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 name. That's how sacred the name Jesus is. His very name is not uttered in hell. It's not allowed. Your body cannot do it. And one thing I want you to know, if you forgive your mother, I apologize for resenting her. I'm sorry for resenting you. And uh however she reacts to it, that's on her. Don't respond to her reaction. Don't if she say I'm sorry, son, fine. If she doesn't, fine. If she get mad, fine. If she cry, fine. You let her. She just acting out. She love her misery. But the but if you forgive her, I promise you, man, you will overcome hell, just like that. And the reason that you will overcome it because the hell is in you. It's in hell. Is in every human being who has anger. It's in your mind, and the spirit of evil is living in your imagination. And that's why God said to bring every thought into captivity. Your thoughts are not my thoughts. My thoughts are not yours. They are not of you. And so you've been limiting your imagination, thinking that it was you. And you have been wishing evil in your imagination. And so, but when you forgive, God is going to give you a clear mind. He's going to take away the spirit of evil and give you a clear mind. And the devil can never touch you again. He's limiting your imagination by way of your unforgiven heart and by deceiving you, making you think that you are your thoughts, that you create these thoughts and that they are you and they are not. It's in your mind. It's, you remember in the Bible, Paul said, the things I do, I don't want to do. Something else yes. can make a home in me. It's yeah. in there. Satan has made a home in your imagination and you have identified with it all of your life, thinking that was you, but he's in your mind, and that will change once you forgive. He will have to depart from you, and and no more attack from the devil will ever happen again because he he will have to go make a home in someone else. But God I'll will give you a that. clear mind. I'll be praying that, brother. Yeah, and I'll do that. Yeah, make sure you forgive. I'm sorry for resenting you. That's amazing, man. I totally understand, but every human... Hell is on earth inside of human beings. Yeah. It's in the mind. And once you forgive, heaven will be on earth inside. You know how God said the kingdom of heaven is here, right here, right now? Yes. It's right here, right now, inside of you. And you will see that once you forgive. All right? Yes, sir. and then practice staying present. God is not in your past in thoughts or the future, which doesn't exist. He's in the present. So practice staying present. You'll be fine. Yes, sir. I'll do it. Yes, sir. So I'll I got to ask, what do you think about racism? You believe it exists? I believe it exists in certain people's hearts. Meaning what? I believe that some people are racist and, you know, they hate people just because of the color of their skin. I I believe that that exists. But as far as this institutional racism, um, not not really. I I don't believe that that it's an institutional thing holding anybody back. 
I want you to know that racism does not exist. It has never existed, will never exist, can't exist, ain't going to exist. Is this no? And I grew up on a plantation down in Alabama under this Jim Crow laws. I remember mm -hmm. for blacks only, same for whites only. God said, our battle is a spiritual battle. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against spirits and principalities. And so yes. those people hating one another is because their hearts are wicked. And so they yeah. hate. But Satan make up excuses and tell you, oh, you hate somebody because of their color. Really, it's just that they have wicked hearts. That's why we must be born again of the heart. It's a spiritual battle. It's not about racism at all. And the world is using that in order to divide and conquer. Because you, you can never resolve something called racism because it doesn't exist. But you can change the heart if you want to change, right? So it's a made up word in order to divide and conquer. It's not real. Yeah, I, I firmly believe that. It's done nothing but divide us. Yeah, absolutely. Because they use it for money and power. It's not real right. at all. And they have divided this country with that word like I've never seen before. And they come up with DEI and all. And they keep it going because they want power and control. And, and you can't get power and control unless you control somebody. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so you got to mm -hmm. stop believing a lie. Yeah, absolutely, brother. I'm with you 100% on that. Amazing. Are you a Republican? Well, I mean, I have I favor more like the libertarian type views, but I'm not a pure libertarian. I'm not a pure Republican. I'm just, more than anything, I'm a Christian. And I, I stopped labeling myself and putting myself in a box because I think every single issue is an individual issue. And I don't care what a certain party what their response is to it. I'm not politically motivated. I'm spiritually motivated. So if I, for example, if I say I'm a libertarian, I still like laws and I still think fentanyl ought to be illegal. Yeah. And so, you know, uh, but a libertarian will tell me I'm a communist because I want <laughs> fentanyl to be illegal, you know? And it's like, it, it's like, I still agree with some laws because I think there needs to be some laws, but, um, it's hard to say what I really am, but I lean more towards libertarian, but I'm not pure libertarian. Right. Amazing. I understand. And where do you stand on men and should men be allowed to play in women's sports? That's an abomination. And, uh, dude, it, it makes me sick to, to be honest. And there's so much of that going on. Even at the Olympics, there was this dude who is a boxer. He beat the crap out of these females oh. And uh, they totally rigged it. And I honestly think that, you know, the dude I'm talking about. Yes. I, I think do. it's Colin Kaepernick. I really do. I really oh. think they, they, I really think that that dude, he looks just, or she or he, whatever. He looks just like Colin Kaepernick. <laughs> well, I, think that they, I don't know about that, but I do know I, what I you're really, talking about. I, I really think that they put an NFL player in there to beat some chicks up in a boxing match just as a satanic display. Um and, uh, yeah, I, I think it's wicked what's going on. I really do. And should women be allowed to play in men's sports? No. I mean, they, they couldn't compete anyways unless it, the sport is cooking. I mean, it's it's not fair. Yeah, absolutely, man. What a mess, huh? Yeah, absolutely, brother. And that's how quick a nation can fall Yeah. when they turn their backs on God. Everything gets so perverted because— Without the Bible as that base of truth, there's not even a definition of what a man and a woman is. The Bible is what sets the definition of a man and yeah. a woman. And and that's the Bible is the base of truth. So if you get away from the Bible, all of these things become perverted. Yeah. I um I remember they elected a black woman to the US Supreme Court, and not mm -hmm. because she was qualified, but because she was black and female. And during the confirmation hearing, they ask ask her what was a woman. She didn't even know what a woman was. Right. Isn't that amazing? Right. And yet they put her on the court. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and that's that's what's happening to our nation. We're sick on the inside, and so we're not going to bear fruits while we're sick like that. And and one last, not one last thing, but how? Um, where do you stand on abortion? I believe that it's murder. I believe that it's evil. I believe that it's wicked. And uh, I believe it's a sacrifice to the demonic uh, entity called Moloch. 
And that's all that it is, is uh, a sacrifice to demons. And the people that don't know that, they've just been deceived by the devil, but it is murder. Yeah. And how are you treated in, uh, in the uh, MMA world? You're so Christian. You believe firmly in your belief. How are you treated by the fan and other players and blah, blah, blah? I'm beloved. Oh, nice. Jesse, I, I can't tell you how many people love me. I mean, I, I'm absolutely beloved. Everywhere I go, people tell me that they love me. People shake my hand. People want to, to come up and give me a hug. People want to take pictures. And uh, there's only one reason, and that's because I've got the love of God in my heart. I walk with God, and I love thy neighbor as, as thyself. Yeah. And uh, that's the only explanation as to why people love me, because I want to I want to be loved. Right and um, How did it, your it's, wife... It's a, how did your wife handle all these women all over you at these fights and you're getting so much attention? How is she handling that? As good as she possibly can. I mean, there's not a bit of jealousy in her. Right on. And she she also knows my heart too. She knows that I don't I, I don't seek after any of these other women. I don't even want them in my heart. Um, I don't even like to look at them. God forgive me if I even look at another woman. Right and uh, I just don't have it in my heart to want another woman. And she she senses that about me, and she totally trusts me. Nice. And so what is love? <laughs> love is like God, basically. I mean, it's just, it's... I mean, it's hard to put it into words. Um, complete acceptance, I guess. I want to be with somebody. And so you told me I can put my money on you this December? You can bet the farm on me, brother. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I hope I don't lose my farm. I'm going to have to come live at your farm. Well, save a couple cows. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. So listen, I got to put you on the hot seat and... Uh, I need you to answer these questions as quickly as possible. Yes, sir. The hot seat. What is a man? Um, he has a penis. Do we need more white babies? Yes, we need more all of them. Earth is flat. I asked you about the earth already, but is the earth flat or round? Flat as a pancake. Who win in a fight? Oh, who win in a fight? A bear or a country boy? Country boy. <laughs> Are UFOs real? No, they're satanic. Nothing can cross the firmament. Is it wrong for a black man to love the Confederate flag? Absolutely not. Does a bear shit in the woods? Yes. <laughs> True or false? Chicken farmers is harder than... Chicken farming is harder than MMA. False. <laughs> is it ever okay to call a woman fat? Yes. Which is worse, abortion or slavery? Abortion. True or false, sending your child to a public school is child abuse. True, it's, it's demonic. <laughs> Did you have fun? True, brother. Amazing. Thank you for coming on, man. That was amazing. Tell the folks how to get to your website or whatever you want to put out there, information you want. Go ahead. Man, I got a buddy. His name is Landon. Um, he's a great mechanic. He's battling for his life right now. If y'all would pray for him, he's got all sorts of cysts on his pancreas. And if y'all would pray for Landon, he has four cysts on his pancreas. And uh, he's he's lost over 100 pounds Um Pray that he asks Jesus into his heart because he don't believe in Jesus and pray that his pancreas is healed. And I know he's going to be healed and he, God's putting him through all these tests because he wants Landon to call on him. And that's what I keep telling Landon. I say, if you just call on Jesus, that's all he wants. And uh, pray for Landon spiritually and pray for him physically. Landon, right? L-A-N-D-I-N-G? O-N. L-A-N-D-O-N. Oh, yes, okay. Well, we definitely hold him up and wish him well, man. That's amazing. How old is he? He's about 34, 35, I think. That's amazing. So you have a fight coming up in December, December 7th? Yes, sir. 
I wish you well with that, man. Thank you so much, brother. Uh, oh, I got to ask you one final. You, you won a fight once, and when you won, you held the Bible up, and you were, you were saying freedom, I think? Yes. What, what were you thinking, and what did you mean, and what was happening at that moment? Well, I knew that I wanted to hold the Bible up, um, and I and I wanted to say freedom because I could only yell one word. I knew I didn't have time to yell multiple words, and so I prayed. I said, God, what should I yell when I hold this Bible up? And the first word that came to mind is freedom because God gave me my freedom back. And people that look at Christianity from the outside, they think that Christianity will enslave them because of all the rules that they have to follow. But those rules lead to your freedom. You're actually a slave to your sin. So I was I was a slave to my sin. I was shackled by my sin. I was I was held back by my sin. When I came to Jesus Christ, the shackles were broke loose and I was freed from my ways of sin in the name of Jesus Christ. So when I held up that Bible, I yelled freedom. Right on. Do you love white people? I do. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you, man. That was fun. I really wish you well in December, all right? Dude, I love you, brother, and thank you so much for having me on here, and thank you for sharing your wisdom and taking your time and, and trusting me on this platform. Yeah, absolutely. And thank you all for tuning in. I absolutely appreciate it. Don't forget to uh, support The Fall Estate by going to thefallestate.tv slash donate or locals.com in the description there. Like, follow, ring the bell, subscribe, and... Uh, if you have any su other suggestions for our guests on this show, contact my producer, producer at thefallestate.tv. Producer at fallestate.tv, and thank you all for tuning in. And by the way, happy, uh, happy Thanksgiving, man. Thank you so much, brother. I can't wait to eat some of that good food. I know. <laughs> all right, so we'll, if you're ever in L.A., come on down. We'd like to have you on in person. Well, I didn't know that you were in L.A. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Um, brother, I would love to come in here on person. And uh, I'm just glad that we were able to do the Zoom call. If, if Because right now I got all the training and farm work. That's why I couldn't come to the studio. But this is just awesome, man. I'm so happy. Me too, man. I totally enjoyed that. And I really wish you well. And hopefully one day we can meet in person. We will. I, I, I do believe that. Yeah, we we're right here in L.A. So thank you, man. We'll talk. All right. God bless you, brother. Thank you so much. All right. You too. Thank you. All right. See you, Mr. Peterson. All right, buddy. Peace.